office bearers of the association, Mr. Aman Lekhi and uh, young lawyer friends. When the office bearers came to me, I told them, uh, they told me, to, they suggested me that I should speak on drafting. So I told them that I will uh, put it in a different way. Ultimately, uh, there are questions asked to you on drafting. You are supposed to draft some pleadings, applications, SLPs in your exam. So I told them that I will uh, tell the young lawyers what judges expect from them. And in the process, maybe a few little secrets I'll be divulging to you. Because I remember long back, I was in Aurangabad bench of Bombay High Court. I had a long sitting. Then I was invited to address uh, young lawyers who had recently joined practice, those who were practicing up to five years. And there was an interactive session. So one, uh, I was taking an assignment of second appeals under section 100. So one lawyer asked me, young lawyer, sir, how you are able to read 60 matters, 70 matters every day? Second appeal is always difficult in high court. I said, I will not divulge uh, many secrets. So I told a uh, young lawyer, you know, you may be a legal wizard, but if you want to read judgments of both the courts, trial court and district court, you won't be able to read more than 30-35 uh, matters. But I divulge the secret. If I read a 30, 40 matters on a particular day, if 41st matter is called out, first question which I would naturally put to the lawyer is, yes, mister, what is the substantial question of law? The lawyer is under impression that I have read that. Therefore, lawyer would say, sir, only two submissions, then I sit down. So I get a signal that there is nothing in the second appeal. And with our experience, sometimes, you know, we can read from the body language of the lawyer also, whether he has any uh, merit in the case. So in the process of having dialogue with you, I may share some secrets also. See, ultimately, why you file, uh, why you draft a case? It may be SLP, it may be repetition under Article 32, it may be a suit on the original side. It may be a delay condonation application. See, ultimate object is not only to file it because client comes to you and he pays you the fees. The ultimate object is that if possible, if your client has a good case, the client must get some relief from the court. So nobody should be filing it for the sake of filing. It should not be the approach that look, client has come to me. Uh, he has given me few documents. Only impugned judgment is there, there are other, no other documents. So you are not expected to file a half-baked petition, half-baked SLP. See, ultimately, what judges expect? You know, nowadays there are on Friday, Monday and Friday, there are 60, 65, 70 matters. So <coughs> we are judges when we sit with those files, either on Thursday or Saturday or Sunday. We, all that we expect is that SLP is drafted in such a manner that within no time we are able to understand what is the real controversy. That's our expectation. Ultimately, uh, if you file a proper SLP containing po proper annexures, that, put, uh, that puts the judges at ease because we know everything. Now, day in and day out, I see this. Now, for example, uh, SLP is filed which arises out of uh, a criminal appeal. And every uh, Thursday and uh, 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 Sunday, we read the matter. And sometimes the entire issue revolves around deposition of one or two eyewitnesses. If we read, if we uh, go through the judgment of the appellate court, that is the high court, all that we need to see is uh, deposition of two witnesses. But if those two depositions are not on record, then you are putting the judge under more stress. Then we go to the trial court, we try to find out what is the finding of the trial court. So therefore, it is not enough that you have copies of the impugned orders and you uh, uh, file a petition. Other day, I dealt with SLP. There are two bulky judgments, 50, uh, 50 pages by trial court, 35 pages by district court, and around 40 pages by high court. Now, what was the issue involved? whether the document which is subject matter of the suit was uh, a conditional sale or mortgage. You know, now law is so settled, right, from Chun Chun Zha and other cases is settled. But 
if we don't have that document annexed to the SLP, how we are going to decide? We will we'll read judgments of the three courts by spending time or at least two courts or at least high court for that matter. But if you don't annex that document, how are we going to decide the matter? Case after case, I see this that material <coughs> documents are not annexed. In many cases, which arises, uh, which arise out of uh, writs jurisdiction, there are government government orders in some state they are called as some states they are government resolutions whatever name they are government orders executive orders the entire case is based on interpretation of government orders but those copies are not annexed so ultimately if you want want see ultimately if you want relief from the judge you must make the judge comfortable and therefore there has to be a proper drafting all documents must form part of your slp or your for that matter it petition under article 32 i one more area where i think lot of improvement is needed where you must apply your mind you know what if you have to read 35 40 matters then you can be very meticulous you can go through each and every page but if you are required to read 70 matters every weekend then if your synopsis is defective the very purpose of having synopsis is defeated. So, before you file SLP, you must be fully conversant with the facts of the case. Only if you have fully studied the matter, then you will be able to draft proper synopsis. I can tell you from my own experience as a judge, I will be completing 20 years of judgeship, two high courts and now Supreme Court. As judges, we feel happy if we feel relaxed if there is a proper synopsis and proper list of dates which gives all material particulars not only uh, the uh, statement of uh, dates and events but against every date if you mention in the bracket where you will get that particular document now in most of the cases uh, the way slp is filed we don't look at the synopsis because we find that in after case after case the synopsis is very defective now please place yourself in position of a judge if you have a very meticulously drafted synopsis, the judge will be able to understand more quickly what is the controversy. See, ultimately, you must think on these lines that today client has come to me, he has paid me money, he wants me to file SLP or he wants to file SLP with application for condonation of delay. Your first object should be that you will file the case in such a manner which will make out some point in favor of your client and which judge will be able to appreciate. Now you can do that provided your petition is complete, all relevant documents have been annexed. On this aspect, I want to make suggestion to even the, uh, to the uh, association. Now serious issue which we see in Supreme Court or maybe in high courts also <coughs> now is issue of translation. The translations are incorrect, sometimes they can be misleading. But now I, I want to share something with you. I mean, the lawyers have capacity to do what I am going to suggest. I have been made chairman of the committee uh, which monitors translation of uh, judgments of the Supreme Court into regional languages or translation of judgments of the High Court in their own lo local languages. Last three months I have been working on that. Then I have suddenly realized that there are so many good softwares available, either paid or free. There is a Bhashini software developed by NIC. There is one software which is paid software, CaseMine, Google, Microsoft, everybody has these softwares. And if you start using those softwares, of course, uh, you can't simply rely upon that translation. But what you have to do is what we are doing when we are translating the judgments of the Supreme Court into regional languages by using that software. That job of translation, whatever uh, AI tool, whatever software you use, it takes four to five minutes to translate, four to five uh, minutes to translate about 300 pages, even less than that. Then all that you are required to do is, you are required to only manually compare whether translation is correct. And those who are working in the field, they tell me that more and more work you do on a particular software, automatically the legal glossary is uploaded into software. In fact, it's quite easy. I mean, you can ex consult some expert that, uh, if you want to translate something from Hindi into uh, English. Now, there are softwares where if you can upload the legal glossary, 
into uh, hindu into uh, hindi glossary which can be translated into english it becomes very easy so i think bar association must take help of experts now and start using ai tools or software for translation so coming back to the point if you are translating a particular document if you are filing translation for example the in slp there is dispute about interpretation of the will and where the court is required to read the will if the translation is not proper then the whole purpose of filing slp is frustrated because we as a judges we immediately notice that there is something seriously wrong with the translation i may not be conversant with uh, many languages i can read hindi i can read marathi to some extent i can read gujarati but if it is in other languages we need translation so as advocate on record it is essential part of the drafting that you must file properly translated documents now this is more so when uh, you are translating the depositions recorded in the uh, uh, vernacular language of different states into english one more area of drafting you know what is practically being uh, happening i have seen it that when you file slp say you are filing slp uh, against an appeal under section uh, 96 of cpc which is first appeal before the high court or you are filing slp against say a judgment of acquittal what i find is that when slp is drafted the lawyer doesn't go to the root of the matter in fact when he before he drafts slp he must study the matter he must make research and then he should be ready with the grounds which actually he is going to urge before the court and if you do that you are drafting of slp especially grounds which you take in the slp and in the beginning of the uh, synopsis you put those uh, arguments <coughs> now if you file mechanically just uh, pick up the appeal memo before the uh, high court and just copy it or add few uh, normal grounds which we add that will not work because see as judge if i have a slp uh, which contains grounds and i can with our experience we know that these grounds are only general grounds or somebody has applied his mind and has formulated the grounds the arguments which is going to use in the court if you incorporate those grounds you have two advantages one is that the judge who reads is in better position and secondly you will be in better position when you argue your slp position everything is ready in fact i tell some of the young lawyers that if a case is covered if a case is covered by direct judgment say of constitution bench or any bench of this court ideally you should be filing that copy filing the copy of judgment because it becomes very easy for the judges that a case is covered we don't have to open our laptop or our ipad and uh, make our own research and find out whether there is a direct judgment so these are few things which you must keep it in mind because ultimately as i uh, i started with that that ultimately your object is to see that your client gets relief and if you want to be successful in that object <coughs> then it is obvious that you have to draft it properly i give you several examples now for example uh, i saw some of the old question papers there is one question paper which says that uh, draft a delay condonation application thank you draft a delay condonation application where you have to explain delay of 300 days i want to say something looking at the future see my generation of judges i can say that we are very liberal when it comes to condonation of delay now i remember when i started practice in high court you know even today those grounds are there. what were the grounds available that litigant was not aware that judgment has been pronounced <coughs> litigant did not get copy of that judgment the ad advocate engaged by the litigant had sent him uh, a letter informing you that your case has been decided against you i did not get the letter these are the standard grounds i am talking about private litigation i'll come to the uh, Uh, applications filed by public authority later on now with the passage of time all these excuses are not going to be available judges of younger generation will throw out your application he will say that look the moment judgment is signed it is uploaded on the website how can you say that you uh, were not you are not aware the case status will indicate that case has been decided on a particular day how can you say that you don't have copy because the copy is very much available on the website now no lawyer is going to send you a letter now no lawyer is going to send you a letter because uh, now at 
even common man uses now cell phone there will be either sms whatsapp whatever that will be the mode of communication now no no new judge, judge of new generation is going to accept such routine grounds so therefore now you have to be very meticulous in fact now i quite see a changing trend now keep aside criminal matters where accused has been convicted where we are liberal and we have to be liberal because ultimately article 21 is info, is involved but in other cases i see now the new generation of judges who are the new generation which is working in high courts i see a complete change of approach now they are becoming very strict when it comes to condonation of delay because now with the uh, advancement of science and technology with better connectivity now hardly any ground remains available now i remember in high court you know uh, somebody litigant in remote area he used to say sir uh, in the delay condonation application that it was very difficult for me to travel from that particular village to uh, 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 to the high court to meet the lawyer now all these grounds are not going to be available today so therefore as we progress i am sure that the approach of the judges will undergo change when it comes to condonation of delay because as a time changes we have to change one more thing now i uh, even today i met some young lawyers who are practicing here they are eors in one of the functions now some of them said sir uh, still there is digital divide that we can't we are not that techno savvy we can't operate the equipment now young lawyers who are going to be uh, going to be eors of tomorrow i want to make you one request that you have to become techno savvy there is no option but to adopt technology and i also see that excuse you know lawyers giving this excuse i remember after the pandemic started in lockdown right from day 1 with my colleagues i used to move from one district to other district in karnataka we used to visit some taluka places just to find out that how far video uh, uh, conference hearing is successful in trial courts so i went to a trial court uh, it, was, it was a taluka court and we had devised a practice there most of the courts having are having huge compound so because of the social distancing we used to sit below a tree and arrange uh, chairs and i used to have discussion with the members of the bar and uh, of course judicial office used to be present so in one uh, one particular uh, taluka place i went the lawyer started complaining sir this digital divide and we are not able to access we are being denied access to justice so i was just casually looking at the uh, some young young members of bar who were members of the managing committee there so one young lawyer was constantly looking at his cell phone so i ultimately to ask him uh, i said mr uh, i am not asking you which film you are seeing on your uh, cell phone because you may i mean everybody will feel awkward if i ask you that question and you answer that question but now you are so techno savvy that you are using that gadget to see something some youtube or maybe uh, uh, any other media so therefore now uh, as we progress now tomorrow i think uh, we are going to open a premises here where e filing facilities will be available so you have to get equipped with e filing also now coming to the, the point where i started <coughs> delay condonation you have to be meticulous when you draft application for condonation of delay it can't be uh, cutting pasting job few uh, paragraphs are uploaded on your uh, uh, your laptop or your desktop and you simply do cut and paste job there are many cases i mean many cases we ask a question to the lawyer in slp <laughs> look i want to know what was the interim order operating during the pendency of case before the high court lawyer has no answer lawyer has no answer sometimes we ask a lawyer especially in the criminal matters just find out what is the stage of trial lawyer says i will take instructions now it is so easy now if you are drafting slp say uh, 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 slp against order rejecting regular bail application naturally first question will come from the judge what is the uh, stage of the case whether charges are framed whether applications for discharge have been disposed of when you draft slp you access to the website of the concerned trial court now practically all trial courts you will get entire data entire data on the website you will get entire data on national judicial data grid so access to that data and then make proper averments 
Now, if you are filing SLP, you want to seek interim relief. Naturally, first question will come from the judge that look, what was the interim relief granted to you during pendency of the appeal before the High Court or pendency of the writ petition before the High Court. Now, that question has direct relevance with the molding of the interim relief which we are likely to grant in your favour. So, these are very small things. In many criminal cases, we don't know how long person has undergone. Your custody certificate is not annexed. The lawyer says, sir, uh, I could not get custody certificate. But it's a private brief. Surely you can take instructions that your client has undergone, say, nine years. You may not have in terms of uh, uh, year, days and months. Surely you can take instructions that uh, how long he has undergone. So, therefore, what I want to tell you is that when you start, you accept a brief for drafting a case. First question, first thing you should do is place yourself in position of a judge. That if you are going to be a judge, what documents will look for? What facts will look for? You place yourself in position of a judge. What, what, what a judge will require and which government the judge will require if you are filing a delay condonation application. So place yourself in position of a judge. Only in that case you will realize that what you are supposed to do. And one thing principle which I again repeat that you have to always keep it in mind that you are filing that case only with the object of ensuring that within four corners of law your client gets some relief. And one more thing, if drafting is proper, we will be able to curb the delays. Now today <coughs> in Supreme Court, which no other high court it happens, in Supreme Court you file a SLP and within 15 days or 20 days if you are lucky it is listed on board. Then there will be three, four applications for additional documents. One does not know whether those documents are part of the record before the trial court or high court. I, I, have not, I, I have worked in two high courts. I have not seen anything like this happening. Now, why this happens? Because the first SLP is uh, filed uh, half-heartedly without even looking at the documents, without even applying your mind at what are the documents we will need when you are going to argue or your counsel is going to argue the case before the court. Now, what is happening is ultimately this results into delay. The moment SLP is there, we ask you a question. You say, no, sir, I have not annexed this document. I'll do it by way of additional document. Then we adjourn the case for one week, two weeks, three weeks. If I'm from my little experience of last about two years in Supreme Court, I will tell you if SLP contains all documents, all material particulars, all details, then it is unlikely that the case will be adjourned on the ground that you want to take some instructions, you want to produce some documents. If all the advocates on the record start, start that practice, I am sure that the, ad, the adjournments which are taken on the miscellaneous day, those adjournments will be re reduced to <coughs> at least one half. There is one more uh, area where some of you will be appearing for public bodies or the government for that matter. You may be standing counsel for some government. There are so many uh, 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 government corporations. Now, obviously, when you appear for such a public authority, your responsibility is more. And therefore, you should be more uh, cautious. See, you are not representing a pri private client. About private client, you can have excuses. You know that litigant came to me, he did not have documents. This you can't expect from when you are appearing for a public body, you can't expect that. You are appearing for a public body, you are appearing for a public sector undertaking of the government. You must ensure that the officer who briefs you gives you all the material, all the documents. And there, now you have to be very careful when you draft delay condonation applications. Because unfortunately, uh, in our system, there are delays on the part of public authorities. I, 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 I can say this that some of the state governments, they can never file uh, SLP without waiting for expiry of period of limitation of SLP. Every SLP has to be accompanied with delay condonation application. Same is the case with some municipal co bodies, municipal corporations, municipal authorities and uh, local bodies. Now, as I told you, you have to be very, very cautious when you draft applications for condonation of delay. Because I am sure that approach of the JDS is going to change and especially we are strict when it comes to public body or government when there is application for condonation of delay. And when you appear for a public body, it, responsibility is more on you. Because we don't, it depends on the nature of the matter. 
if something goes wrong because you could not draft the slp properly you could not take the point correctly you could not annex the correct documents ultimately if you fail in the supreme court even in a good case this is not a case where individual litigant will be affected it will be a case where common man will be affected ultimately when government government files slp when we dismiss it because the delay is not satisfactorily explained sometimes public exchequer exchequer is affected sometimes large section of society is affected so therefore your responsibility is more when you uh, file slp in uh, slp or writ petition whatever proceeding you want to file when you appear for a uh, for a public body third thing which i want to tell you is that you must also apply your mind to one more important fact when you are a lawyer you are responsible you are a, you belong to elite class of society and therefore you should be also alive to fact that a given case a case comes to you and where you find that a real injustice has been done to your client or a person has been convicted without there being legal evidence <coughs> then your responsibility is more especially when you are dealing with human rights your responsibility is more that a person has suffered injustice and it is only because you could not take proper grounds you only file slp without annexing the notes of important witnesses whose cross examination can tilt the balance in your favor your responsibility is more because because you commit default therefore person will continue to uh, remain in jail or he may go in go in jail as a result of default on your part so ultimately it boils down to this ultimately we have to follow that age old principle that age old principle is that advocate is first officer of the court and then mouthpiece of his client now if you want to act as officer of the court then obviously you have added responsibility and especially in the last court last court of this country you have added responsibility you have added responsibility to be more particular and you have added responsibility to act as officer of the court because if you don't act diligently if you don't apply your mind the doors of justice are perpetually closed to a litigant you are you carry the highest responsibility if somebody is practicing in trial court all and there are two appeals revisions so he can afford to commit mistake you cannot afford to commit mistake and in fact you must look into the object why this advocate has not record examination the object is this object is that you are not any ordinary advocate who is practicing in high court in high court anybody can go and file a petition anybody can go and file an appeal you are <coughs> advocates on record of the highest constitutional court or highest court in the nation and therefore your responsibility is more and therefore this stringent test has been applied that anyone can't file a petition you have to be advocate on record because advocate on record is supposed to carry more and more responsibilities now this is in brief which i wanted to convey i am glad that association has given me this opportunity to have this half an hour dialogue and uh, i look forward for such dialogues because you know there has to be some interaction between the judges and uh, lawyers only if we interact you know i started with that that you know some of the trade secrets of the judges and that is very necessary necessary if you want to succeed as a lawyer so i wish great success to all of you <coughs> those who are going to appear for this examination and i hope and trust that the bar associations initiative continues of giving you training <coughs> then we will have a very high quality of advocates on record practicing in this court and that is our hope and in fact that is the whole object of this exercise so i wish all of you uh, a great success in profession and i thank the association for giving me this opportunity namaste